The market continues to grind higher after the holiday week. Is 5,600 SPX on deck? This is Invest with Jacob. Okay, guys, so last week was the July 4th holiday week, and as I said in my video, that is usually a very bullish week. It's one of the most bullish weeks of the year, and while we were looking for a move up and then potentially a move down, the bears were not not to be seen, and the bulls did push it to new highs. Now the question is, can they hit 5,600 SPX? I'll get into that in just one second, but first, if you're new here, welcome to the show, guys. My name is Jacob Gabbard, and this is Invest with Jacob, where we use Elliott Wave Theory to break down the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below so that you can get our daily S&P updates, our trade setups, and our buy alerts. All right, guys, with the market continuing to grind higher, let's jump into the chart and take a look. Okay, guys, so here we are on the one-hour futures chart for the S&P 500. And I've said it many times, and I'll say it again. As long as we are above support, this is a bull market, and the pressure remains up meaning there are more buyers than sellers. Now, once support breaks, that shift changes, and we would look for more downside follow-through. And even when we have downside setups, that doesn't mean that they're locks. It just means that that's the setup for now. And if the bears can follow through, we could see a shift in behavior. But until that happens, this is a bull market, and we should continue to look higher until support breaks. So last week, we got the nice push up from the bulls at a holiday week trading. They float it higher almost every time. It's low volume trading. It's generally bullish. Uh, in almost all cases, the 4th of July week is very bullish. We did have a small setup to the downside, but they were unable to follow through and the bulls just went ahead and pushed it up to all-time highs, which is what happens when setups fail. When the bulls fail, the bears push, and when the bears fail, the bulls push. So in that case, the bulls pushed up into our next target area, the 56.35 area to 56.51. These would be our next overall targets. A little higher, 5660 would put us right at 5600 on the SPX. I do think they'll probably tag that given price action so far this week and last week. And they're so close, it becomes a magnet, that whole number. Uh, and it fits the pattern pretty well. So we do have a minor degree four or five setup here where we could push right up into that number. So we would be looking for the bulls to continue. And that could be after a small pullback. They could you know, give us a little drop down into the uh, 5610 area to back test this low and then up. But we would expect the bulls to continue toward the 5650 area overall as a continuation of this move up from uh, back here at the beginning of July. So uh, July 4th week, bullish to the upside. We do have a pattern breakout here that's looking like it wants to finish up in that 56, 50 to 60 area. We also have some catalysts at the end of the week with CPI and PPI and some uh, earnings as well. So we'll see how they drive the market. But as of right now, our key level to the downside is 56.10 to start with. So 56.10 needs to break. If you get that broken, you're, you should see 55.85, 50, 55.85 area. And then if that breaks, we should back test that 55.20 area that was so strong down here. Now this is where it gets important. 55.20 is a very key level. So these are the upper supports, 55 or 56.10, 55.85, and then 55.20. If 55.20 breaks again, they can get selling to the downside and start to push quickly if that's the case, but they actually have to push and break down before that happens. So until any of these levels break, the market and the pressure is up, and this is a bull market. So again, key levels 56.10 to the downside, 56.50 to 60 to the upside is where we'd be looking. And then in between there, if you don't get a direct breakout, we could see more consolidation before we break out like this. Um, in a more of a triangular wave for if they want to do something like that. So there's your key levels, 56.10, 55.85, 55.20. And then to the upside, we would look to break out to 56.51 to 56.60. Over on the NASDAQ, to no one's surprise, the NASDAQ also broke out in the bullish week. VS is breaking out, NASDAQ is likely with it. Actually, it's kind of vice versa. If NASDAQ's breaking out, ES is likely with it. But we did get a nice uh, setup here. It does look like it needs... A four or five type move like this to the upside before this pattern would complete. Um, they did get a little mi minor triangle in here, but I don't think it's big enough um, to be considered a wave four. Uh, our next targets to the upside would be 2070, I'm sorry, 20,701, 20,781, and then 20,910 would be our next areas of interest that we would look for to the upside as resistance. And then to the downside, they need to break this 20,580 area, the lows that they made there. Then they'll need to come down and test 20,356. 
Then they should come back down and start testing these 19.9 areas, but really they want to come down and break 19.714 for the bears to really start accelerating and wanting to push lower and potentially put in a top and try to run back to the downside. So those levels have to break before we start talking about the bears. Otherwise, pressure does remain up with our next targets being 12.701 to 12.9. I'm sorry, 2701 to 2910 on the NASDAQ. Guys, if you love the information that I put out in these videos and you want real-time market updates from me, you need to check out investwithjacob.com. There's a link down in the description. Go ahead and click that link. It'll take you right over to the webpage. Once you're there, check out our membership plans area. We have two incredible plans, and they both come with a seven-day free trial because I want you to get in there, make sure you love it, and become part of the trading team before you ever spend a penny. You can cancel at any time. You literally have nothing to lose by checking us out. We also have our educational areas, our Elliott Wave 4 Beginners Online course, as well as our Advanced Elliott Wave course. These courses are helping real traders understand this crazy market and how to know where the key levels are. In our Advanced course, we go through all of the advanced patterns that you see that are very difficult to track, such as the advanced fibs, the diagonals, the double and triple threes, flats, and other advanced patterns that can make trading and understanding where we're at very difficult. These videos help you understand those. They go through and show you how the patterns look, what the FIB levels are, and how to track them and understand when they're happening. This course, as you can see on the screen, is helping our traders understand the market. But if it's too advanced or you're just getting started with Elliott Wave, we do have our Elliott Wave for Beginners Online course. This course is helping real traders make real money and finally understand this market in a way that makes sense. It can be very confusing when good news makes the market go down and bad news makes the market go up. And that's because Elliot knew that the news cycles were garbage years ago. He knew that the key levels mattered and he knew what happened when they held and what happened when they broke. This gives you a huge trading advantage over the rest of the market. This course is 25 videos where we go over the introduction, where we go over your mindset and emotion, the KISS method and why it works, chart setup and tools, where we go through each tool you need to use along with Elliot Wave, why and how to use it. And as, as well as the Elliott Wave for Beginners area where we go through each of the waves, we go through the theory of alternation, the corrective zigzag, how to find the key levels, everything you need to fully understand this market in a way that makes sense. Now, the cool thing about both courses is if you want to get them at a discount, you can get the bundle and get both courses at a $37 discount. Or if you want to get them for free, you can simply join one of my monthly rooms as all of our training material is included in those rooms. In my first room, the Invest with Jacob room, you get all of my real-time market updates, all of my buy and sell alerts, all of your Elliott Wave questions answered, a midday video where I go over exactly where we are in the counts and what to expect, as well as the training material you just saw. We trade the SPY and the QQQ, and we swing in day trades. We do trade quite often in my room. However, if you're looking for futures trading, individual stocks, income trading, and advanced training, you need to check out PT's Throne Room. In there, you get everything you get in the Invest with Jacob Room, as well as income trading that's been absolutely killing it, advanced training where PT has his reduced risk binary method that gets you in at a cheap price and gets you huge multiples on your money, and it's how he structures that trade that's so unique, something you kind of have to see to understand, and that's another reason for that seven-day free trial. He also does futures trading as well as individual stocks. He also started a challenge account where he put $4,000 into an account trading mini ES futures, showing you how to build a small account into a large retirement or savings account. Guys, we'd love to have you in these rooms so we can all make money together. All right, the key uh, takeaways for today. The market is set up to push higher again at 56.51 to 60 would be the next level up. From there, we would look for resistance and the market to turn down around that 5,600 SPX level. That's going to be a big round number. It's going to be a key level to watch for the SPX. To the downside, they have to break 56.10 first, then 55.85, then 55.20 to get the ball rolling. Those are the three major support zones where you can look for bullish bounces or breakdowns from the bulls. Over on the NASDAQ, Same type of setup. We are looking for higher up to that 20,701 to 20,910 area for this next push. However, if they can break down below the 2573 or 580 area, then the 20,350 area, and then ultimately down below this 19,731 area, the bears can begin to accelerate and push to the downside, and we can start talking about a potential top being in. Until that happens, we would look for higher. Guys, that is your market update for today. I'll talk to you tomorrow.